Good morning, folks. We've got space weather, the Parker probe, the moon, another trip to fantasy land, and a troubling look at the Antarctic dynamics in context. But we're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last day brought crackling at the biggest northern active region and development of the northern reach of the incoming coronal hole. The sunspot evolution the last day saw the southern spots nearly decay, while up north the lead grouping is growing as it heads for the limb next. The solar wind should begin to decline in intensity until the next stream from that southern coronal hole arrives in about another four or five days. You can see it's already descending back from the impacts we've had earlier this week. Let's take a quick look back at the filament that erupted on the 20th with stereo. Stereo did take a few days to update, but we now see the eruption wrap back around a great distance on the southern hemisphere. This is the one that could be seen from Earth's view as the filament snapping upwards towards the equator. Stereo is behind in orbit and saw what Earth would perceive as the side of the sun. Let's go to Parker, which is up there to study the sun and solar wind, but couldn't help itself taking a shot of Venus as it swung past recently, less than 8,000 miles at closest approach. The little streams you see are either solar wind or the tenuous extended exosphere of Venus, the particles striking the lens. Last year at this time, we were going over the locust invasion. It's much worse this year. The government pledges aid and assistance as the people claim the shortages are showing but all they're getting is words. Up next, we're at the ESA's latest plans for the moon. They say that the days of rover searching are behind us. It's time to get to areas rovers can't go, or out of which they wouldn't be able to return. The solution is obvious, right? Jumping robots, adding the vertical component to the motion of the robotic explorers. This next one? No, can't let this slide. Yes, by tweaking equations and assumptions, they found a way to get the virtually non-interacting dark matter in their math to collapse into a black hole. The problem is that these black holes are not quite what they think they are. See Dr. Robitaille's channel on YouTube, Sky Scholar. And dark matter is completely not real. This is one fake thing made of another fake thing. And when the models continually break down and you're going on 40 years of failed detections, the mind does start to conjure curiously bizarre ways to try to make the data fit your story, rather than the other way around, which is called science. Lastly, folks, the real top story today hits Antarctica. There's been so much discussion of ice melt triggering an ice age from the top journals, and how it cools and freshens the sea, reduces heat transport, and increases albedo. The latest on the West Antarctic tells a serious story. We have entered the runaway melts that we've seen form in other places, and this is a combination of the atmosphere and the submarine volcanoes we've seen them identify since about 2014. The ice loss is increasing at significant rates, and for everything on why this matters, well, it was five weeks ago we went over all those top journals, describing why, despite what it might seem like, all signs point to our interglacial coming to a now well overdue end. We greatly appreciate your support. That video is linked below and it's really helpful. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.